Welcome to La Criminotica, your source of information on the most intriguing and dark crimes in history. In this installment, we will explore the history of the infamous serial killer, Rodney James Alcala. Known for his seemingly charming appearance and his ability to hide his true nature, Alcala left a trail of terror and devastation in his wake. Join us as we delve into the dark details of his crimes, his modus operandi, and the events that led to his capture. Prepare to be plunged into the darkest corners of the human mind in this riveting exploration of Rodney James Alcala's story. Warning. The content you will see below may be disturbing to some viewers. Known as, The Dating Game Killer. Classification, Serial Killer. Characteristics, Rapist, Torturer. Number of Victims, from 50 to 130. Date of Crime, 1971 to 1979. Date of Arrest, July 27, 1979. Date of Birth, August 23, 1943. Victims, Cornelia Michelle Crilly, 23, Ellen Hover Jane, 23, Jill Barkham, 18, Georgia Wixted, 27, Charlotte Lamb, 31, Jill Parento, 21, and Robin Samso, 12. Method of Crime, Beating, Strangulation. Place, Various, USA, California, USA, New York. Status, Sentenced to death in California on March 30, 2010. Sentenced to two life terms in New York on January 7, 2013. Rodney Alcala, born Rodrigo Jacques Alcala Bucher, August 23, 1943, is a convicted rapist and serial murderer. He was sentenced to death in California in 2010 for five murders committed in that state between 1977 and 1979. In 2013, he received an additional 25 years to life in prison after pleading guilty to two New York murders in 1971 and 1977. The true body count of him remains unknown, and could be much higher. One police detective called Alcala a killing machine and others have compared him to Ted Bundy. A homicide investigator familiar with the evidence speculates that he may have murdered as many as 50 women, while other estimates put as many as 130. Prosecutors say Alcala played with his victims, strangling them unconscious, then reviving them, repeating this process several times before killing them. Police discovered a collection of more than 1,000 photos taken by Alcala, mostly of women and teenage boys, most of them in sexually explicit poses. He is sometimes called the dating game killer, due to his appearance on the 1978 television show The Dating Game in the middle of his series of murders. Early Years and Education Alcala was born Rodrigo Jacques Alcala Bucher in San Antonio, Texas, the son of Raul Alcala Bucher and Ana Maria Gutierrez. His father abandoned the family and his mother moved with Rodney and his sisters to suburban Los Angeles when he was about 12 years old. He joined the United States Army in 1960, at age 17, where he served as secretary. In 1964, after what was described as a nervous breakdown, he was diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder by a military psychiatrist and discharged for medical reasons. Other diagnoses later proposed by various psychiatric experts in their trials included narcissistic personality disorder, borderline personality disorder, and, from homicide expert Vernon Gebirth, malignant narcissistic personality disorder with comorbid psychopathy and sexual sadism. After leaving the military, Alcala, who he claims has a genius level IQ, graduated from the UCLA School of Fine Arts and later studied film with Roman Polanski at New York University. Early Criminal Record Alcala committed the first known crime of his in 1968. A motorist in Los Angeles called police after seeing him lure an eight-year-old girl named Tali Shapiro to her Hollywood apartment. The girl was found raped and beaten with a steel rod, but Alcala had fled the scene. In 1971 he obtained a counseling job at a New Hampshire children's arts camp, 
using the alias John Berger. In June 1971 Cornelia Michelle Crilly, a 23-year-old flight attendant for Trans World Airlines, was found raped and strangled in her Manhattan apartment. Her murder would remain unsolved for the next 40 years. Later that summer two boys attending the arts camp saw an FBI poster about Alcala at the post office and notified the camp directors. He was arrested and extradited to California. By then Tali Shapiro's parents had moved her entire family to Mexico and refused to allow her to testify in Alcala's trial. She could not be convicted of rape and attempted murder without the primary witness, and prosecutors were forced to allow Alcala to plead guilty to a lesser assault charge. He was paroled after 34 months, in 1974, under the Indeterminate Sentence program popular at the time, which allowed parole boards to release offenders as soon as they showed evidence of rehabilitation. Less than two months later, he was arrested for assaulting a 13-year-old girl, identified in court documents as Julie J., who had agreed to what she thought would be a ride to school. Once again, he was paroled after serving two years of an indeterminate sentence. In 1977, after his second release from prison, under monitoring by Los Angeles parole officers, he was allowed to travel to New York City. NYPD investigators who looked at the cases now believe that within a week of arriving in Manhattan, Alcala killed 23-year-old Ellen Hover Jane, the daughter of the owner of Ciro's, a popular Hollywood nightclub and the goddaughter of Dean Martin and Sammy Davis, Jr. His remains were found buried on the grounds of the Rockefeller Estate in Westchester County. In 1978 Alcala worked briefly at the Los Angeles Times as a typesetter and was interviewed by members of the Hillside Strangler Task Force as part of their investigation of known sex offenders. Although Alcala was ruled out as the Hillside Strangler, he was arrested and served a short sentence for possession of marijuana. During this period Alcala convinced hundreds of men and women that he was a professional youth fashion photographer and photographed them for his portfolio. Then a co-worker recalled that Alcala shared the photos of him with co-workers. I thought it was strange, but I was young, I didn't know anything, he said. When I asked him why he took the photos, he said his mother asked him to do it. I remember that the girls were naked. He said he was a professional, so I thought I was being a model for him, said one of the women, who allowed Alcala to photograph her in 1979. Most of the photos are sexually explicit, and most remain unidentified. Police fear that some of the subjects may have been victims in additional cases. Appearance on the Dating Game In 1978, despite his status as a convicted rapist and registered sex offender, Alcala was accepted as a contestant on the Dating Game. By then he had already killed at least two women in California and another two in New York. Host Jim Lang introduced him as a successful photographer who began his career when his father found him in the darkroom at the age of 13, fully grown up. Dot. Among his hobbies, he can be found skydiving or motorcycling. Actor Jed Mills, who competed against Alcala as Bachelor One, later described him as a very strange guy with weird opinions. He claimed that Alcala had no earrings on the show. As he had claimed during the 2010 trial, earrings were not yet a socially acceptable accoutrement for men in 1978. I had never seen a man with an earring in his ear, he said. I would have noticed them. Alcala won the contest, and a date with Bachelorette Cheryl Bradshaw, who subsequently refused to date him, according to published reports, because she found him creepy. Criminal profiler Pat Brown noted that Alcala killed Robin Samso and at least two other women after he appeared on the dating game, and speculated that Bradshaw's rejection might have been an aggravating factor. You wonder what he did in his mind, Brown said. That's something I wouldn't take too well. Serial killers don't understand rejection. They think there's something wrong with that girl, she played me. She played hard to get. The Samso murder and the first two trials. Robin Samso, a 12-year-old girl from Huntington Beach, California, 
disappeared somewhere between the beach and her ballet class on June 20, 1979. Her decomposing body was found 12 days later in the Los Angeles foothills. Police later found Samso's earrings in a Seattle storage unit rented by Alcala. In 1980 Alcala was tried, found guilty, and sentenced to death for Samso's murder, but the verdict was overturned by the California Supreme Court, as jurors had been inadequately informed of his previous sexual crimes. In 1986, after a second trial, he was convicted again and sentenced to death once more. However, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals overturned this second conviction, in part because a witness was not allowed to support Alcala's claim that the ranger who found Samso's body had been hypnotized by security investigators police. Additional Victims During the preparation of his third trial in 2003, Orange County investigators managed through DNA evidence to accuse Alcala of the murder of four more women, Jill Barkham, 18, whose body was found in a Los Angeles ravine in 1977, and initially believed to have been a victim of the Hillside Stranglers, Georgia Wixted, 27. Beaten to death in her Malibu apartment in 1977, Charlotte Lamb, 31, raped and strangled in the laundry room of her El Segundo apartment complex in 1978, and Jill Parento, 21, killed in her Burbank apartment in 1979. All the bodies were found, placed in carefully selected positions. Third Trial In 2003 prosecutors filed a motion to unify the charges for Samso's death with those of the four newly discovered victims. Alcala's lawyers challenged the motion, but in 2006, the California Supreme Court ruled in favor of the prosecution, and in February 2010 Alcala stood trial for the five murders. During this third trial, Alcala acted as his own attorney, denying all charges. However, the jury, after two days of deliberations, found Alcala guilty of all five counts of first-degree murder. A surprise witness during the sentencing phase of the trial was Tali Shapiro, Alcala's first known victim. In March 2010 he was sentenced to death for the third time. Additional Charges Following his 2010 conviction, New York authorities announced they would stop pursuing Alcala. However, in January 2011 a Manhattan grand jury indicted him for the murders of Ellen Hover, Ciro's heiress, murdered July 15, 1977, and Cornelia Crilly, a TWA flight attendant, murdered June 12, 1977. 1971 In June 2012, he was extradited to New York, where he initially pleaded not guilty to the murders of Hover and Crilly, but in December he changed his plea to guilty in both cases, stating his desire to return to California to work on his appeal against his death sentence. On January 7, 2013, he received an additional sentence of 25 years to life in prison, since the state of New York abolished the death penalty in 2007. In March 2011, investigators in Marin County, north of San Francisco, announced that they were certain that Alcala was responsible for the murder of 19-year-old Pamela Jean Lamson, who disappeared in 1977 after taking a trip to Fisherman's Wharf with a man who had offered to photograph her. However, given the lack of evidence, it is unlikely that charges will be brought against Alcala. In Seattle, in the state of Washington, an investigation is open into the possible connection of Alcala with the murders of Antonietta Whitaker, 13, in July 1977, and Joyce Gaunt, 17, in February 1978. Photographs of Unidentified People In March 2010, the Huntington Beach and New York City Police Department released 120 photographs found in the possession of Rodney Alcala, asking the public for help in identifying the women and children in the photographs in case they could be treated. Of more victims of Alcala During the first weeks, 21 women contacted the police, acknowledging that they were the ones appearing in the photographs and at least six families have recognized a missing family member in the aforementioned photographs. In addition, the police have another 900 photographs found in the possession of Alcala, which have not been made public, 
given their explicit sexual content. As of November 2014, 110 of the original photos remain posted online, and police continue to solicit the public's help with new identifications. Rodney James Alcala, the dating game killer. July 9, 2012. When specialists began to compare Rodney Alcala with Ted Bundy himself, many thought it was an exaggeration. Alcala was a prisoner who had spent several years behind bars for committing a series of murders, but the sentences were retracted and the guilt of the defendant was questioned on more than one occasion. A couple of false confessions had entangled the whole story around this man who, years ago, had become one of the most eligible bachelors in North America. Rodney James Alcala was born in Texas, San Antonio, on August 23, 1943. His father abandoned him when he was 12, and at 17 he enlisted in the United States Army. Three years later, and due to several nervous attacks, Alcala is discharged. He was diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder, which made it difficult for him to interact with his peers. The exams highlighted that Alcala had the IQ of a genius, marking an IQ of 160, however he was also a borderline narcissist. Once out of the army, Rodney decides to study at the University of California Los Angeles, UCLA, where he graduated from the School of Fine Arts. In 1968, Alcala raped and beat an eight-year-old girl, Tali Shapiro, with a crowbar. Fortunately, while the stranger tricked his victim into inviting her into his car, a witness followed him and alerted a police officer, who entered the apartment unexpectedly, finding Shapiro on the floor, still alive, but badly injured. Meanwhile, the rapist escaped through the back door and disappeared. Alerted by the situation, and suspecting that he could be recognized by the minor, Alcala decides to flee to the east and enrolls in the New York City Film School, changing his name several times to John Berger. And John Berger. In 1971, Rodney Alcala commits his first murder. The victim was identified as 23-year-old Cornelia Crilly Michelle. The girl was raped and strangled, however, her crime would have to wait almost 40 years to be solved. The police found no clues, and the case was frozen. Meanwhile, Alcala was accused of harassing two minors. His connection to the case of Tali Shapiro, the eight-year-old girl who had been raped and beaten in 1968, was discovered, and he was extradited to California. The main witness to the assault, Tali Shapiro, moved to Mexico with her family in the case against Alcala lost steam. The judges watched helplessly as the rapist pleaded guilty to a lesser charge of assault and was sentenced to 34 months in prison. Alcala was released in 1974, but just a few weeks later, he appeared before the judge again for the alleged kidnapping of a 13-year-old girl. The charge could not be proven, however, Alcala would have committed the crime of providing marijuana to the minor. Rodney served a two-year sentence and was back on the streets. He moved to Los Angeles and murdered, a week after his release, 23-year-old Ellen Jane Hover. He worked for a brief period writing for the Los Angeles Times, where some colleagues would remember, years later, seeing him with various photographs of different girls with whom he allegedly had affairs. Rodney was a photographer, and he used this medium to attract and impress different young women, several of whom were captivated by his charms. He was a well-mannered guy, likable, intelligent, attractive and a bit mischievous. None of them ever suspected that Alcala was a ruthless murderer and rapist. In 1977, Alcala had already become a cold serial killer. The following murders showed that the murderer was enjoying his work, Rodney Alcala strangled, but his modus operandi began to become more and more sadistic, torturing his victims for several hours before killing them. In addition to the rapes and beatings, he used to suffocate them unconscious and leave them nearly dead, then revive them several times. Then he strangled them and sodomized their bodies with a hammer, or beat their heads to pieces, he even began to decapitate them and practice necrophilia with their bodies. 
At the same time, Alcala made his life as if nothing had happened, and the police had no clue about the murders. The fact that no one associated him with the crimes he had been committing made him feel an enormous sensation of impunity. In 1978, and with plenty of confidence, Rodney Alcala appeared on television to participate in the famous show The Dating Game, a fairly popular American program that lasted until the mid-90s. In it, a girl had to choose between three men, who would accompany her on a romantic date. As expected, Alcala looked charming in the casting and was selected to participate. During the show, he was introduced to her as a successful photographer, a fan of skydiving and motorcycles. He managed to impress the girl, Cheryl Bradshaw, with flirtations and a lot of mischief and good humor, as well as a wide smile throughout the show. Cheryl did not hesitate to choose him as the winner. After the show, the girl would cancel the appointment with Alcala. In her opinion, there was something she didn't like, and was scared of, about that man. Alcala's last murder would be that of Robin Samso, a 12-year-old girl whom he kidnapped on June 20, 1979. The incident was reported to the police, while a couple of witnesses claimed to have seen her, shortly before her disappearance, with a photographer on a nearby beach. Fifteen days later, Samso's body was found near the mountains, eaten by animals and insects. The girl had been strangled, decapitated, and was missing several teeth. The witnesses managed to give a good description of the suspect, and a sketch was made that was recognized by one of the policemen who knew Alcala, due to the rape case in which he was involved years before. A ranger also claimed to have seen a Datsun F-10, at the place of discovery, the same day that Samso disappeared. The vehicle was Rodney Alcala's and police issued a warrant for his arrest. Days later, the suspect was arrested at his mother's home and charged with the murder of Robin Samso. Alcala's luck seemed to be running out. During the trial, Robin Samso's mother brought a revolver to kill Alcala, but she didn't. The harsh process caused problems for the Samso family and some members stopped attending. The murderer had been sentenced to death, but various technicalities led to Alcala's conviction being overturned in 1984 and again in 2001. Later, the evidence began to link it with other murder cases committed between 1971 and 1979. For more charges were added to the Samso case, and soon the sum of possible murders rose to an alarming 30. During the raid on the killer's home, hundreds of photographs of women were found, including those he had murdered. Suddenly, the police began to wonder if the other girls photographed were dead or alive. Several specialists assured that it was possible that Alcala was linked to the disappearance of some 125 women and decided to disseminate, through the internet and social networks, more than 130 photographs that the murderer hid, with the hope that one of them could be identified. They, but they were not successful. The official number of women murdered by Alcala is a mystery, but if the expert's estimate is correct, we could be talking about the worst serial killer in the United States. In 2012, Alcala was sentenced to death. Despite representing himself before the jury and denying all charges against him, his defense was not strong. Apparently, justice no longer wants to continue battling this man who, despite spending four decades in prison, continues to be a real headache. At the age of 68, Rodney James Alcala awaits his execution on death row at the San Quentin prison. Update as of July 2023, additional victims. Pamela Lamson. In March 2011, investigators in Marin County, California, north of San Francisco, announced that they were certain that Alcala was responsible for the October 9, 1977 murder of 19-year-old Pamela Jean Pam Lamson who disappeared. Her after taking a trip to Fisherman's Wharf to meet a man who had offered to photograph her. Her naked and battered body was later found in Marin County, near a hiking trail. With no fingerprints or usable DNA, charges were never filed, 
but police claimed there was enough evidence to convince them that Alcala committed the crime. Christine Thornton In September 2016, Alcala was charged with the murder of 28-year-old Christine Ruth Thornton, who disappeared in 1977. Thornton and her boyfriend moved away from her family to live in San Antonio, Texas. After they separated in Biloxi, Mississippi, in June 1977, she was last seen hitchhiking and was never heard from again. In 2013, Thornton's sister acknowledged an image released by the Huntington Beach Police and the NYPD of a dark-haired woman riding a motorcycle wearing a yellow shirt. Her body was found in Sweetwater County, Wyoming, along Interstate 80, in 1982, but was not identified until 2015 when DNA provided by Thornton's relatives matched tissue samples from her remains. Alcala admitted to taking the photo, but not killing the woman, who was approximately six months pregnant at the time of her death. Thornton is the first alleged murder victim linked to Alcala's photos made public in 2010. Alcala, 73, was reportedly too ill to make the trip from California to Wyoming to stand trial on the new charges. Death Alcala finally passed away on July 24, 2021 at the age of 77 in the Corcoran, California prison of natural causes. So much for today's episode, subscribe and give like if you liked it. See you in the next episode of La Criminotica.